Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. In the last video, we saw what is storage virtualization and what is server virtualization. This video will be the continuation of the last video and the last part of the series of virtualization. In this video, we are going to see what is network virtualization. So, before we go and see what is network virtualization, let me show you in quick how Network virtualization improves the packet movement between the two virtual machines or between the two servers. So let me show you first how the packet moves without the network virtualization. So if I have a packet which is lying on my virtual machine VM1 and if I want to move this network packet from virtual machine VM1 to VM12, how the packet will move in the absence of the network virtualization. One thing here is to note that the both virtual machines VM1 and VM12 lies on two different VLAN IDs. So with the color code we can identify that this particular virtual machine lies on VLAN ID 100 and my VM12 is lying on VLAN ID 101. So if we have to move this network packet from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 1, 2, how this network packet moves. So in the absence of the network virtualization, let's see how this network packet moves from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 2. So to move it, first this network packet has to come out of this virtual machine and then go to the physical network of this server on which this virtual machine is deployed. Now from the server, it has to go to the switch. So this is one of my switch. Now you can see from virtual machine 1, the network packet first went out of this server and then went to the uplink where my switch is installed. Now in the switch also, I have to configure VLAN ID 100 and 101. If we don't do this, this switch will not get to know to which virtual machine I have to forward this particular network packet. So if you see, I have configured this VLAN ID 100 and VLAN ID 101 on this particular virtual switch and also I have to configure it on my physical switch. You can see to move this packet from my virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 2, this network packet went all the down from the virtual machine to the server and then from the server to the switches. Now with the switches, it will get to know that which VLAN ID it has to pass this network packet. but as this VLAN IDs are different, it has to go through the router also. Once this network packet passed through the router, it will again go back to this network switch and then this network switch again pass this network packet to the same server on which that virtual machine is deployed. It can be somewhere on this server or in this server also. So from server, it will again go to the virtual switches and then land it to the virtual machine VM12. So we saw that if I have to send any network packet from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 1, 2, it has to go all the way down from this virtual switch, then server, and then this uplink switch, then router, and then again it will go back to the same server and then went to the virtual machine VM1, 2. Now, if we configure this network infrastructure with a network virtualization infrastructure, if I have to send this virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 1, 2, In that case, this network packet will not even leave this server. It will go to this virtual switches and the virtual switches itself transfer this network packet from the virtual machine 1 to the virtual machine 1, 2. We will see in detail how this network package is going from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 1, 2. So this is the things which I am going to achieve with this network virtualization. Let's see what is network virtualization in detail. Now, in the previous slide, we just saw if a network packet have to move from the virtual machine VM1 to the virtual machine VM2, it has to go from the virtual machine VM1 to the server network and then from the server and then from the server network, it has to go to the network switch, which is the uplink switch for the server. And this switch will decide that the network packet has to forward it to which server. In this case, it will be forwarded. In this case, it will be forwarded to the same server because the virtual machine VM12 is lying on the same server. 
Now, it can happen that if I have to send a network packet from the virtual machine VM1 to the, to the virtual machine VM32, it has to follow the same path. That means it has to move from the particular virtual machine to the server network and from server network it will go to the switches then from the switches it will go to the router and from the router again it will go back to the switches and from the switches it will go to the server that switches will decide that on which server this network packet has to get forwarded and from the server it will go to the virtual machine 32 which is the destination network for this particular network packet now what is the other problem with the traditional network infrastructure now suppose it can happen that I have to create a new network for the new virtual machine systems. I mean to say that if I have to deploy a one virtual machine on this server one, a second virtual machine on the second server and the third virtual machine on the third server and this all these three servers has to be into the different VLAN IDs which I can configure on this virtual switches. But the problem will not stop here. What I have to do that to move the network packet from this server to this server, the switch has to aware of this particular VLAN ID which we have introduced now. So we have to configure this particular VLAN ID on this server or switches also. So now if you see that if I have to add one server into a new different VLAN IDs, I have to create that VLAN IDs on this virtual switches and also on this particular switch and the router which is an extra burden for the admin. So let's see how this virtualized network infrastructure will help us to overcome the traditional network infrastructure problem. In the traditional network infrastructure problem, one problem we had is to add this virtual particular VLAN IDs to all the switches and the routers if we are creating any new VLAN IDs. Now to overcome this problem, there is something called logical switches and logical routers which we can create on this top of this hypervisor. So let me create this particular logical switches and logical routers which will be connected to these virtual machines. So you can see all this particular virtual machines is connected to the virtual logical switches like this particular VM1 is connected to the VLAN ID 100 and VM3 is connected to the VLAN ID 100. Similarly, VM2 is connected to this VLAN ID 101. So what I have done, I have created a logical virtual switches for both the two different LANs and both these two different logical virtual switches is connected to this router. Now, in this case, how the packet moves from the virtual machine VM1 to the virtual machine VM7. To do this, what the hypervisors these days are using, the method called encapsulation. So in this encapsulation, they encapsulate the packet coming from any one of this virtual machine and then they will send it to this particular router or switches depending on the type of the destination. So now in this case, if I am sending a network from the virtual machine VM1 to this virtual machine VM7, let's see how the packet moves. So from the virtual machine VM1, you can see there is a network packet generated and it will come to the server 1. So from server 1, it will move to the switches. One thing we have to note here that these switches are not aware of this VLAN IDs because we, we don't have to configure in this case. Now the switches will send these packets depending on the destination. Now suppose the dest in this case the destination is the server 3 so it will move this network packet to the server 3. Now the server 3 hypervisor knows this server 1 encapsulated this particular uh, network packet so they will decapsulate it and send it to this virtual machine VM7. In the case of the VMware they use the VX VXLAN technology to do this encapsulation and decapsulation method. The other benefit which you are going to get is suppose if we are adding new virtual machines on this particular servers like if I am adding three virtual machine on this particular server and all these three virtual machines are connected to different VLAN ID. So what I can do, I can create a logical virtual switch and this logical virtual switch will be connected to this router. Now if any network packet if I have to send and it 
if it is lying on the same particular server in this case the vm1 vm2 and vm3 is lying on this particular one server and if i want to send this word and if i want to send a network packet from the vm1 to vm3 the biggest benefit we are going to get is it don't have to even cross this particular server this logical router and these logical switches will help us to move the packet from the vm1 to the vm3 so in this case if i have a network packet and if i want to send it to the vm3 with the help of this router i can i can get to know to which and with the help of this router and switches it will not even leave this server and it will reach to its destination so if you see this uh, traditional network infrastructure if i had to send any network packet from this vir uh, virtual machine vm1 to the vm2 it has to come from the vm1 to this particular server then this particular switches then it will go to the router and then again it will go back to the same server and from the same server it will go to the particular virtual machine so if you see we have reduced this path of this particular network packet a lot so this is the biggest benefit we are going to get out of this network infrastructure on top of this we don't have to even configure the switches and routers for the new vlan ideas which we are creating so these are the two benefits we are seeing out of this network virtualization for time being uh, this is all about virtualized network infrastructure hope you like this video if you have any doubts please write it in comment if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and stay connected